the God Memorandum to you from God. And the second law is like unto the first. Proclaim your rarity. You had condemned yourself to a potter's field, and there you lay, unable to forgive your own failure, destroying yourself with self-hate, self-incrimination, and revulsion at your crimes against yourself and others. Are you not perplexed? Do you not wonder why I am able to forgive your failures, your transgressions, your pitiful demeanor, when you cannot forgive yourself? I address you now for three reasons. You need me. You are not one of the herd leading for destruction in a gray mass of mediocrity, and you are a great rarity. Consider a painting by Rembrandt, or a bronze by Degas, or a violin by Stradivarius, or a play by Shakespeare. They have great value for two reasons. Their creators were masters, and they are few in number, yet there are more than one of each of these. On that reasoning, you are the most valuable treasure on the face of the earth, for you know who created you, and there is only one of you. Never in all the 70 billion humans who have walked on this planet since the beginning of time has there been anyone exactly like you. Never until the end of time will there be another such as you. You have shown no knowledge or appreciation of your uniqueness. Yet you are the rarest thing in the world. From your father, in his moment of supreme love, flowed countless seeds of love more than 400 million in number. All of them, as they swam within your mother, gave up the ghost and died, all except you. You alone persevered within the loving warmth of your mother's body, searching for the other half, a single cell from your mother so small that more than two million would be necessary to fill an acorn shell. Yet, despite impossible odds, in that vast ocean of darkness and disaster, you persevered, found that infinitesimal cell, joined with it, and began a new life, your life. You arrived bringing with you, as does every child, a message that I was not yet discouraged of man. Two cells now united in a miracle. Two cells, each containing 33 chromosomes, and within each chromosome hundreds of genes which would govern every characteristic about you, from the color of your eyes, to the charm of your manner, to the size of your brain. With all the combinations at my command, beginning with a single sperm from your father's 400 million, through the hundreds of genes in each of the chromosomes from your mother and father, I could have created 300,000 billion humans, each different from the other. But who did I bring forth? You, one of a kind, rarest of the rare, a priceless treasure possessed of qualities of mind and speech and movement and appearance and action as no other that has ever lived, lives or shall live. Why have you valued yourself in pennies when you are worth the king's ransom? Why did you listen to those who demean you? And far worse, why did you believe them? Take counsel. No longer hide your rarity in the dark. Bring it forth. Show the world. Strive not to walk as your brother walks, nor talk as your leader talks, nor labor as do the mediocre. Never do as another. Never imitate. For how do you know that you may not imitate evil? And he who imitates evil always goes beyond the example set, while he who imitates what is good always falls short. Imitate no one. Be yourself. Show your rarity to the world, and they will shower you with gold. This, then, is the second law. Proclaim your rarity. And now you have received two laws. Count your blessings. Proclaim your rarity. You have no handicaps. You are not mediocre. You nod. You force a smile. You admit your self-deception. What of your next complaint? Opportunity never seeks thee. 
take counsel, and it shall come to pass. For now, I give you the law of success in every venture. Many centuries ago, this law was given to your forefathers from the mountaintop. Some heeded the law, and lo, their life was filled with the fruit of happiness, accomplishment, gold, and peace of mind. Most listened not, for they sought magic means, devious routes, or waited for the devil called luck to deliver them their riches of life. They waited in vain. Just as you waited, and then they wept as you wept, blaming their lack of fortune on my will. The law was simple. Young and old, pauper or king, white or black, male or female, all can use the secret to their advantage. For of all the rules and the speeches and scriptures of success and how to attain it, only one method has never failed. Whomsoever shall compel you to go one mile, go with him too. This then is the third law. The secret that will produce riches and acclaim beyond your dreams. Go another mile. The only certain means of success is to render more and better service than is expected of you. No matter what your task may be, this is a habit followed by all successful people since the beginning of time. Therefore I saith, the surest way to doom yourself to mediocrity is to perform only the work for which you are paid. Think not you are being cheated if you deliver more than the silver you receive. For there is a pendulum to all life. To go another mile is a privilege you must appropriate by your own initiative. You cannot, you must not avoid it. Neglect it. Do only as little as the others, and the responsibility for your failure is yours alone. You can no more render service without receiving your compensation than you can withhold the rendering of it without suffering the loss of reward. Cause and effect, means and ends, seed and fruit, these cannot be separated. The effect already blooms in the cause, and the end pre-exists in the means and the fruit is always in the sea. Go another mile. Concern yourself not, should you serve an ungrateful master. Serve him more. Instead of him, let it be me who is in your debt. For then you will know that every minute, every stroke of extra service will be repaid. And worry not, should your reward not come soon, for the longer payment is withheld, the better for you, and compound interest on compound interest is this law's greatest benefit. You cannot command success, you can only deserve it. And now you know the great secret necessary in order to merit its rare reward. Go another mile. Where is this field whence you cried there was no opportunity? Look, look around thee. See where only yesterday you wallowed in the refuge of self-pity. You now walk tall on a carpet of gold. Nothing has changed except you. You are everything. You are my greatest miracle. You are the greatest miracle in the world. And now the laws of happiness and success are three. Count your blessings. Proclaim your rarity. Go another mile. Be patient with your progress. To count your blessings with gratitude. To proclaim your rarity with pride to go an extra mile and then another. These acts are not accomplished in the blinking of an eye. Yet that which you require with most difficulty, you retain the longest. As those who have earned a fortune are more careful of it than those by whom it was inherited. And fear not as you enter your new life. Every noble accusation is attended with its risk. He who fears to encounter the one must not expect to obtain the other. Now you know you are a miracle, and there is no fear in a miracle. Be proud. You are not a momentary whim in the careless creator's experiment in the laboratory of life. You are not a slave of forces that you cannot comprehend. You are a free manifestation of no force but mine, of no love but mine. You were made with a purpose. Feel my hand. Hear my words. You need me, and I need you. We have a world to rebuild. 
and if it requires the miracle, what is that to us? We are both miracles, and now we have each other. Never have I lost faith in you. Since that day when I first spun you on this giant wave and tossed you helplessly on the sands. As you measure time, that was more than 500 million years ago. There were many models, many shapes, many sizes, before I reached perfection in you more than 30,000 years ago. I have made no further effort to improve you in all these years. For how could I improve on a miracle? You were a marvel to behold, and I was pleased. I gave you the world and the dominion over it. But then, to enable you to reach its full potential, I placed my hand upon you once more and endowed you with powers unknown to any other creature in the universe, even until this day. I gave you the power to think. I gave you the power to love. I gave you the power to will. I gave you the power to laugh. I gave you the power to imagine. I gave you the power to create. I gave you the power to plan. I gave you the power to speak. I gave you the power to pray. My pride in you knows no bound. You were my ultimate creation, my greatest miracle, a complete living being. One who can adjust to climate, any hardship, any challenge. One who can manage his own destiny without the interference from me. One who can translate a sensation of perception, not by instinct, but by thought and deliberation, into whatever action is best for him and all humanity. Thus we come to the fourth law of success and happiness. And I gave you one more power, a power so great that not even my angels possess it. I gave you the power to choose. With this gift, I placed you even above my angels. For angels are not free to choose sin. I gave you complete control over your destiny. I told you to determine for yourself your own nature in accordance with your own free will. Neither heavenly nor earthly in nature, you were free to fashion yourself in whatever form you preferred. You had the power to choose or degenerate into the lowest forms of life. But you also had the power, out of your soul's judgment, to be reborn into a higher form, which are divine. I have never withdrawn your great power, the power to choose. What have you done with this tremendous force? Look at yourself. Think of your choices you have made in your life, and recall now those bitter moments when you would fall to your knees if only you had the opportunity to choose again. What is past is past, and now you know the fourth great law of happiness and success. Choose to love rather than hate. Choose to laugh rather than cry. Choose to create rather than destroy. Choose to persevere rather than quit. Choose to pray rather than gossip. Choose to heal rather than wound. Choose to give rather than steal. Choose to act rather than procrastinate. Choose to grow rather than rot. Choose to pray rather than curse. Choose to live rather than die. Now you know that your misfortunes were not my will. For all my power was vested in you. And the accumulation of deeds and thoughts which placed you on the refuge of humanity were your doing, not mine. My gifts of power were too large for your small nature. Now you have grown tall and wise and the fruits of your land will be yours. You are more than a human being. You are a human becoming. You are capable of great wonders. Your potential is unlimited. Who else among my creatures has mastered fire? Who else among my creatures has conquered gravity, has pierced the heavens, has conquered disease and pestilence and drought? Never demean yourself again. Never settle for the crumbs of life. Never hide your talents from this day hence. Remember the child who says, when I am a big boy, but what is that? Big boy says, when I grow up. And then grown up, he says, when I am wed. 
But to be wed, what is that? After all, the thought of changes to when I retire, and then retirement comes, and he looks back over a landscape traversed, a cold wind sweeps over it, and somehow he has missed it all, and it is gone. Enjoy this day today, and tomorrow tomorrow. You have performed the greatest miracle in the world. You have returned from the living death. You will feel self-pity no more, and each new day will be a challenge and a joy. You have been born again, but just as before, you can choose failure or despair or success and happiness. The choice is yours. The choice is exclusively yours. I can only watch as before, in pride, or sorrow. Remember then the four laws of happiness and success. Count your blessings. Proclaim your rarity. Go another now. Use wisely your power of choice and one more to fulfill the other four. Do all things with love. Love for yourself, love for all others, and love for me. Wipe away your tears, reach out, grasp my hand, and stand straight. Let me cut the grave cloth that bound you. This day you have been notified. You are the greatest miracle in the world.